So after my failed smashed potato experiment, I wanted to give you guys five tips to make better potato wedges in the oven. Biscuits in the kitchen, I'm a sous chef on a mission. Baby, wiggle it, it's vicious. We about to break the dishes. Got the pepper with the sodium. We cooking with petroleum. Come step up to the podium and cut up this linoleum. What I love most about potato wedges is that stark contrast from the crispy exterior to that really fluffy interior that you get because of the bigger wedge. You know, it's harder to get that with something like a thinner french fry, which is more crispy overall. So with that being said, let's start with tip number one. Yukon Gold Potatoes give you a superior crispy crust and are so much more fluffy when compared to a russet potato. These are my favorite potatoes for roasting. And you may not think there's a big difference here, but I'm telling you, if you pair a Yukon Gold Potato that is just salted and plain compared to a russet potato that is salted and plain, there is a really big flavor difference. All you need to do is cut the potatoes in half and then cut them into wedge size. And let's talk about our next tip. Both fruits and vegetables contain pectin, which is what helps them maintain their structure. By applying heat and salt through boiling, this helps soften and break down the pectin, leading to a tender and more delicious potato. Additionally, the salt will diffuse right through the potato during boiling, providing an even seasoning throughout. From a taste perspective, this is one of the most important tips because it ensures that the potato will be evenly seasoned throughout. A lot of potato dishes only get seasoning on the outside, but if you boil your water with salt and the potatoes, it's gonna get that season evening throughout as it diffuses through the potato. Even plain potatoes that this have just been boiled in water taste so much better, I'm telling you. You guys gotta pre-salt your water and boil the potatoes in it. So after draining your salted and boiled potatoes, instead of just throwing oil and spices right on top of them, try blooming them first. Heating the spices releases the volatile oils in the spices, providing you with an enhanced flavor. And this was something that I covered in a recent 3 Minute Thursday video. For my recipe, I'm doing this with cumin, paprika, and cayenne pepper. I heat the spices for 2 minutes until fragrant, and then roughly mix them with the boiled potatoes until a slight slurry forms then you can put them on the baking sheet. I know it can be fun sometimes to just fiddle around with food when we are cooking, but for these, you really gotta let them alone when they're in the oven so they can start to develop that crust. Once I put them in the 450 degree oven, I do not touch them for 20 to 25 minutes so they can start to develop that initial crust. Then I flip them up and let them crisp up for about 20 to 25 minutes longer. This time is when you can fiddle them a little bit more if you notice one side is browning more than the other. And the key to get that great crispiness is really just some patience. So it goes without saying that I love dipping sauces, and whichever dipping sauce you decide to use, make sure it's one that provides some stark contrast to the saltiness and savoriness of the potatoes. For my recipe, I made an herby yogurt sauce by combining plain yogurt, minced lemon zest, lemon juice, a bunch of parsley, salt, and fresh cracked pepper. So if you try one or all of these tips next time you roast potatoes, I would love to know on Instagram. But that's going to wrap it up for me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.